Shortly afterwards, the cell becomes full of viruses and explodes. The new viruses that are given off will continue to implement this intelligent reproduction strategy in other cells. Viruses are rather selective. Different types of viruses attack different structures in our bodies. Rabies attacks the cells which constitute the tissue of the brain. Various cold viruses head for the cells covering the nose and the sinuses. The mumps virus only infects the saliva glands in our mouth. The hepatitis virus settles in the liver. The flu infection is the most difficult for our immune system to deal with, as every year a new flu virus causes the epidemic. And every winter we encounter that virus for the first time. Our immune system has to put up a serious fight in the face of flu viruses with different characteristics. That is the reason for the production of a new flu vaccine every year. This deep freeze contains various flu viruses. Each container holds a generation of flu which gave rise to an epidemic in a different year. These viruses are still very dangerous. That is because they are not dead, only sleeping. If you warm up and inhale the 1980 season flu virus, you will fall ill. Behind these cold corridors and closed doors sleeps a virus that is still more dangerous to man. The smallpox virus. Its properties are still the subject of research on account of the strategy it employs and the way it easily overwhelms its objective. It is kept in only two places in the world, the United States and Russia. It will continue to be stored until its functions are fully understood. It is evident that viruses behave within a most effective strategy and plan. To such an extent, in fact, that the properties possessed by a virus are totally designed in such a way as to make use of the system within the cell. It is obvious that the virus has a creator who is also perfectly aware of the very complex working principles that the cell possesses. There is no doubt that this creator is Almighty God, who creates both the virus and the cell in which it will settle from nothing. We did not create the heavens and earth and everything between them except with truth. Causing the human body, millions of times larger than themselves, to fall ill and even die, these minute viruses are specially created by God to remind people of their helplessness. It is God who creates sickness and who restores us to health. Viruses are created as the cause of sickness. The cure is hidden in our immune systems another miracle of creation within our own bodies. There is always a germ somewhere in our surroundings. If it happens to be a virus, then that means the danger is a serious one. When the virus enters our bodies by the nose or mouth, it seeks out a suitable cell for itself. However, there is a defending army ready to receive it. The first units of that army to encounter the virus are the macrophages, which constantly stand guard in our bodies, 
in other words the eradication units which patrol our bodies macrophages prevent an enemy from installing itself in our bodies by moving around between the cells they have received special training to distinguish viruses from the cells of our bodies due to their structure they can head for a number of targets and destroy several germs at the same time they swallow and digest everything they perceive to be foreign and then continue on their way if the enemy is in such numbers as to overwhelm the attacking macrophages then the macrophages secrete a substance known as pyrogen this substance calls the entire immune system to arms pyrogen also stimulates the temperature rising center of the brain causing a fever a person whose temperature is going up will naturally feel the need to rest he is thus prevented from expending his energy in any other way and all the body's energy is diverted to the war before the war begins it is essential for the defense system to have knowledge of its enemy and to gather intelligence Here an important task falls to the macrophages, since they are the units which engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy and make the first contact with it. To that end, when the macrophages catches and swallows a virus, it carries a part unique to the virus as an information packet in such a way as to be recognizable from the outside. This is intelligence information prepared for the immune system's helper T cells. These rather dynamic units decipher and disseminate the intelligence regarding the enemy to every unit in the army. As soon as they receive the intelligence, the helper T cells first warn the other cells about the enemy threat. They give off a molecule known as lymphokine to do this. This chemical message is the war cry which immediately sends the other cells into action. Thus begins the production of antibodies in the B lymphocytes, which are waiting to neutralize the foe. Because of this strategic duty, B lymphocytes are like weapon-producing factories. The antibodies, produced by the analysis of the intelligence, resemble rockets specially targeted at the enemy. The B cells antibody production takes place at an astonishing speed. They produce thousands of antibodies a second. As we have seen, this communication between helper T cells and B cells is a very sensitive alarm code calling the whole army to produce weapons. Emergency mobilization has now been declared in the body, which is now engaged in total war. The defending army is mustered and soon made ready. With its three-dimensional protein structure, the antibody fits the enemy like a key in a lock. They will lock to a specific area of the virus or bacteria identified by intelligence and damage the enemy's biological structure. The invading germs will thus be neutralized. That is because the antibodies produced by the B cells are perfectly designed in the light of intelligence which reaches them. This resembles a tank being struck by a guided missile on the battlefield. 